Back to one. Pictures up. Action. What is happiness? It's a question that if you ask a million people, you might get a million answers. When I search deep down to find my happiness, I realize that it's an inside job. Happiness is a state of being. It's about searching beyond thought habits from our past. It's about letting go, letting in, and reaching out to help others. That's how I return to happiness. When you find that life's going sideways And you can't take the weight of the world on your back A lie breaks the end of a highway Slowly rising and ready to explode When you can't break down all the walls built up in front of you And you can't see through all the pain that's all you have in you There's another way to escape the darkness and find the truth Spread your wings now, so you can take control. My name is Ryan John Phillips. I was born into this world by loving parents that made every effort possible to make all my dreams come true was born with lots of energy and he always was on the go. He had always a smile on his face. We had such a phenomenal relationship ever since he was a little boy and uh, sports did take a big part of his life and my life, our whole family life. And uh, he excelled in just about everything he wanted to do. I was brought up with values and shown discipline on how to live an honest life. I believe that when we were born into this world, we are pure love and light. There's only one you, and no matter where we're from, we are all destined to live for a purpose. My love of hockey led me into leaving home at a very young age to pursue my coveted goal, playing in the National Hockey League. The road to the NHL took me to Wichita, Kansas, where I met the love of my life, my daughter Sadie. I held on to her. I'm getting videotaped on the camcorder right now as we speak right in front of her. Wait, don't cry because my voice is too loud for her right now. Did you hear that? This is one of the happiest days of my life. I just want you to know that you're going to be loved very much and you're going to be supported 100% by me in everything you do and you're going to be brought up with values because that's what I believe in. Multiple injuries derailed my professional hockey dream. I started on a downward spiral. I lost my values. Drugs, alcohol, and partying led to making many wrong choices. I felt lost and unsure of where my life was going. I then made a decision that would impact myself and my family for many years to come. The marijuana industry in BC where I was growing up was booming, and I was blinded from what I thought was easy money and a glamorous lifestyle. What I thought was the easiest money to make became the hardest money that I would ever know. Everything in our lives comes down to a first cause, then an effect. The choices that we make, no matter what, always have an outcome. I was about to pay the ultimate price. It was a really sloppy job. It was totally unplanned because we were in such a panic to get it done. We shot down the Mount Baker Highway and the driver said that he may have been followed on the way to pick us up on the, on the state side with all the marijuana. It was a hot zone, so to speak, where the feds would watch for people that were, you know, maybe uh, up to no good. At the top of this logging road, 12 kilometers up, that was our gateway into the United States of America with our contraband. 10 kilometers down the Mount Baker Highway, all of a sudden lights started flashing behind us. It was a pink neon. That's when we knew we were screwed. I had guns drawn to my head on the other side of the border. Dogs were barking. 
the DEA were high-fiving like they just won the lottery. It was a very scary moment, probably one of the scariest moments of my life. What was I going to say to my parents? I let not only myself down, my daughter, my family, my brother, everybody that cared about me so much. And I asked the gentleman who was driving the vehicle, I asked him, I said, Are, uh, am I ever going to be allowed back in the United States again? I have a daughter in the United States. And he said, no. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. I was told that being incarcerated in the United States meant that there was no chance of me ever being allowed back into the country again where my daughter was born and being raised. I was able to make two phone calls. And those two phone calls were the hardest phone calls that I've ever had to make in my life. I called my mom and my dad. My dad answered and I told him about the news. Dad, I got arrested. I'm in the United States of America and I'm in big trouble. When he got caught, I, I knew the night he left our home that something wasn't right. And when I got the phone call the next day, I, I was in shock. You just feel a piece of you has been cut away. We kind of knew that something was going on, but we really didn't know for sure. We had a tough time accepting what, was, what, what kind of activity was going on. And Basically, I just couldn't believe it, and then that's why I guess it was such a shock. I was paralyzed by fear, the most fear that I've ever had in my life. And for, for the most part, I don't think I've ever shed a tear in my life until that day. That's when it hit home. The next day, my mom and my brother came down, and that's where the legal process started to turn into, you know, the wheels started to turn into motion and I realized that uh, I was going to be locked up for some time. In prison, I learned a lot about myself and the world. All I had inside were my thoughts and reflections of what my life once was. It was a very lonely place, and I quickly realized who loved and cared for me. Prison wasn't just, uh, it, it wasn't a joke. You know, you see prison on TV, and you read about prison in books, but freedom, is something that's sacred. You know, like, your freedom in this world is something that you need to really, really cherish and hold on to. This is not the way he was brought up. He was brought up with integrity, loyalty, and values. Uh, this was certainly a hit when, when, when your own child is uh, incarcerated and uh, is feeling the pain as well as we are. Everybody felt the pain. But after about seven months of being in there, I made an alliance friendship with a gentleman who was in his mid-50s. He was a little short guy, a little Japanese guy. He kind of reminded me of a real-life Buddha. He said, you got to love yourself. And he was the first person that taught me about self-love. After over 500 days of prison without seeing the light of day, I was institutionalized and in a poor state of mind. I was very grateful to be out. Every day, I wrote down the things that would have a positive impact in my life. I knew the only way out of the darkness was to make a conscious shift. After a time of reflection and inspiration, I realized I had to go and do good in the world. I have known Ryan for three separate phases of my life uh, and his life. Uh, first of which was Ryan the hockey player, grew up together in North Vancouver playing hockey. Second being professional party rock star Ryan and third of which was a return to the original Ryan, which was uh, Ryan that we know today, which is the, uh, the purity and the innocence Ryan. Thailand hit close to home as one of my good friends, Chris, and his two brothers had lost both their parents in the 2004 tsunami. Since then, Chris and his family have built a school for the orphan kids of Kaolak, the city in which his parents perished alongside many others. 
This was to be the first stop on our journey. I, I think about my mom every day. My brothers and I, we, we lost two, two very special people in our lives. And you know, actually, it was this year where I really realized how much of an impact my parents had on me and how much I really do miss them. We got a lot of questions for them and can't be answered, but you know, I go on and move on and you know, do what I gotta do. I just saw the joy of what I can smile when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I add all this present and who wants to be involved in their life. You know, they're they're full of life. But like, even though they've lost what they lost, you know, they don't take they 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 don't take things for granted. Just just going and spending an hour with these kids though, it'll, it'll, it'll change your life. Wait, can you? Southeast Asia has long held a special place in my heart. A trip to the sacred land would be the perfect platform for a happiness adventure. Guys, I'm very blessed today to be with my friend Helen, who is a certified medical intuitive and a psychic. And before I take off on my trip to Southeast Asia, she's gonna give me some of her professional intuition and uh, psychic abilities. Set me up, see if I'm gonna be on the right track. I feel uh, when you were in this trap, you were like this, and it was like it pressed on you every day, and there was a lot of greed involved in it. Yeah. And one day you woke up, for the better of the people around you, the people that are close to you, your daughter, your parents, mm -hmm. um, they're gonna look back and say, oh my God, <laughs> you know, because they've been through a lot. But yeah. they've stood by you, you know? They've accepted you, whatever yeah. way you were, because we love our children unconditionally. And, yeah. <laughs> you had to, to come to that to realize that you had to start over. Mm -hmm. You had to build Ryan again. And this is who you really are. You know, you are discovering who Ryan really is and what you can bring to yourself and what you can bring to other people. This is why you'll be able to help other people because you've been there, you've done that. And now you know that that's not where you want to be. And if you can help just one person, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Really, I can see you, I can see you connecting with these children and bringing them happiness. You're dancing in circles, you're so excited. You really are, Ryan, and you had never really realized how much you love children. Yeah, oh, I love children. Do you know what children. I mean? Because there's so many that are so ill-treated in the world. That is my dream. One of my dreams is I want to give to charities all over the world. That's, that's, yeah, that's my want, dream. That's, yeah, that's, that's, and you will, you know, and it's connected with children. And I love people. Like, I absolutely love people. I just want to give, I want to give, like, well, you, know. you will be giving, giving, giving. Well, you started already, and there's nothing that's going to stop you. There's nothing that's going to block you. You are on your way to uh, fulfill what you're supposed to be doing. I don't know how it came about, how you decided to follow this happiness trail, but it is like a movement. You're going to promote it at different film festivals, but I see you in the one in... Um, it's in the States. Can't go to the States right now, but the film can. The film can go to the, the film States. film can go there, but I'm I can't sure go. I'm sure he can go to the States. Because yeah. I need to be down there to see my daughter anyways. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's been a heartbreaking. It's been uh, horrible. It is yeah. horrible. I would have done an extra five years in prison to, see, to, to be able to go back down there to see her. Yeah. It's not fair that I can't see her, but I did make a mistake. I paid for it, but I've, I've paid my dues. You have paid I've your done, dues. You know, I've had um, enough. It's like the punishment is, you know, for her too. Wow. Yeah, you're very connected. You can, if, if you believe in something, you can have whatever the heck it is that you want in your life. Exactly. Anything. It's just exactly. a matter of having that powerful belief within yourself. And everyone's got it. It's just a matter of bringing that to the surface. That's all it is. Yeah, you're going to lead this, this happiness revolution. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You really are. What makes me absolutely thrilled and happy is to see people discover and fulfill their purpose. And you do that by proposing. Purpose comes from propose. And when you propose what it is that you will do, 
with your unique God-given gifts and then act on that proposal, the world changes. It becomes magical. There is nothing, absolutely nothing that brings me more joy than seeing someone get on path and on purpose and realizing that their gifts, their purpose, their leadership is not about them. It's about serving those who need their purpose, who need their gifts. We got the tickets to Southeast Asia. Let the adventure begin. I set up a goal in my mind that I was going to turn all my setbacks into valuable assets. I knew I could help people through my life experiences, realize that change in the right direction is possible no matter what happened in the past. Okay, so, uh... I came to the realization that giving your own happiness in abundance creates a pattern my purpose for this journey was now clear. Give whatever I could with an open mind and an open heart and inspire as many people along the way. This is the story of Return to Happiness. Well, these just might be the most romantic images yet of the tsunami that hit Asia. This is in Kaolak, which is about two and a half hours north of where we are here in Thailand. It is the hardest hit area where the waves are said to be over 34 feet high. With 2,500 houses. On Sunday, December 26, 2004, an estimated 230,000 people lost their lives in one of the biggest disasters in modern day history. An earthquake in the Indian Ocean caused a massive tsunami that rocked countless cities and towns in 13 countries. This disaster hit close to home as my friend Chris and his two brothers lost both his mother and father. The devastation I saw on television was hard to watch. Today is a day that I've been anticipating for a long time now. I get to go check out this school slash orphanage and uh, play with some kids, spread some love and some goodwill and some happiness. It should be a pretty cool ride. I'm really looking forward to it. Chris made a call to Sook and her husband to let them know that I was coming. These kind people had close ties to my friend's family and they were about to make our visit special. I was led to their family restaurant. Firstly, I had to know what they needed the most. Finding out that they only had one soccer ball between 70 kids made it only fitting that I load up with an abundance of balls so all the kids could play. Some rackets and fresh water seemed to be a good fit as well. Suk's brother helped us load up with everything we needed to make this a special day for everyone. You know, I think giving a little bit of love goes a long way. Before going to the school, we stopped off at D-Time Travel where Souk and her family run a travel tour business. I was given some chilling information on the wave that destroyed so much of this small village. I saw pictures of Chris and his family. There's Chris right there. <laughs> it warmed my heart to know how many people from across the world are still fully engaged in helping with relief efforts. And I had the chance to give my own thanks to these wonderful people that made it possible for me to meet the kids. Pretty powerful stuff. Gone, but never forgotten. It was hard to contain my emotions, to hear about the deaths of so many innocent people. There was good times ahead, though, as the school was right around the corner. 
I was welcomed by a handful of smiling faces that made me feel right at home. I was then introduced to the staff, including the principal. Good life and love. 20 yeah. this time? Yeah. And now he's 32? Thir 32 now? Mm. <laughs> 57? No way. <laughs> I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> now we're going into the John and Jackie Canada building. We're going to go meet some of the kids. It should be a blast. I was led around the school and I met some of the pupils and teachers. It was really invigorating to know that these kids were being educated and being set on the right path. I was told that visitors didn't come often and most didn't have parents, so this was going to be a special occasion. You guys make sure you listen to your teacher here, okay? You have to grow up and be very smart, just like your teacher. I received some great hugs and uplifting energy. Uh -huh. Teacher, give me a hug. After rallying the troops, it was time for a group photo, and what a team this was. Now is soccer time. These little youngsters were pumped, and I was equally as excited. I was about to get schooled by a bunch of kids that could have played all day if time had let them. You could feel the innocence of these children. It took me back to when I was their age, when all you had was the moment and everything was new and exciting. These kids, when they bump in you, they go, yes, when they bump in you. Hey. They all had good manners, they showed so much respect, and the source of their happiness was shown to me with such gratitude and simplicity. This has been one of the best days of my life. These kids don't have much, but they got so much love to give. It's just awesome. I, this, I will never forget this for the rest of my life. Being around these kids made me look into my own life and thoughts of my daughter and Chris's parents echoed in my mind. The simple things in life are always free. The hardest part of the day was the goodbyes. I've come to believe that wherever you go with an open heart and mind, life rewards you with a feeling beyond description. Their smiles and unlimited energy gave me an inner peace, and my meeting with them surely won't be my last. The connection I felt with them will be ingrained in my heart and soul for as long as I live. Unexplainable. I feel like I'm 12 years old again. As I reflected on my day and the disaster that struck years earlier, it warmed my heart to see that this community has managed to restore faith, hope, and dreams of a brighter future for generations to come. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much through small things, you know, through small deeds, to know that there's people that are actively engaged in making this world a better place, and not just cow luck, there was 13 different countries that were hit by the tsunami in 2004. There was 230,000 lives that were taken, probably more. When I got over there and met these people that made it possible for me to meet these kids and to see that they've been, they are being led on the right path, um, it makes me realize that anything is possible in this life. Anything in this world is possible. Now, anything physical is about really changing your energy from the inside out because it creates more positive energy for ourselves. We then release more endorphins as we exercise. And you really have to think conscious about everything that you're speaking, everything that you're eating, and everything that you're doing is part of the end result of what makes you happy. Then I was off to Batong to meet my friend and fierce fighter, Crewmaster Charm, one of the nicer men I've met in Thailand. His life work was helping people reach optimal health and self-discipline. A few years prior, Charm had taught me the basics of Thailand's national sport, Muay Thai. 
I think the most intriguing thing about meeting these Muay Thai fighters was how humble they were outside the ring and how much dedication that they put towards that which they that they desire in their life, and that's just to be fit, to be healthy. And uh, your health is so important because without your health, you can't enjoy all the amazing things that life has to offer. And uh, that's a really special thing. Yeah, These people are happy yeah. because they stay fit. Come on. <laughs> they get to do what they love. It's all about inner health, inner wealth, healthy mind, and healthy body. Right, that's Thanks, right. Thanks, brother. Yeah. I appreciate it. I love you. This gold color makes you more beautiful. <laughs> They're just wonderful people that uh, they work very, very hard. We start at 8 o'clock in the morning until noon and really relax for two, three hours. We start again from three to six. <laughs> <laughs> what makes him happy? Kicking my butt. Wow. This is Jamon. He is a world champion yeah. kickboxer in Thailand. And like kickboxing and Thai boxing in K1. Oh, 24 wow. world champion belt. 25 this only world champion one in belt. In only one in the world. I believe that dedication to that which you strive for in life will often depend on the energy towards that which you desire the most. I then ventured out to see what the night had to offer, and wow, does this city ever come alive. The people from all over the world are attracted to this city full of bright lights, beaches, and around-the-clock entertainment. In Thailand, it's tradition that locals, as well as foreigners, set flying lanterns into the sky with dreams and wishes of luck for themselves and for loved ones past and present. I got this good luck lantern. And this is in commemoration to all the people who lost their lives in the 2004 tsunami. And to my friend Chris Nill, his mom and dad, who are great people, and Chris, who's a very good friend of mine. It just so happened the locals were having a peace rally that night, and it caught my attention immediately. And one of the men leading the charge asked me if I could say a few words. So I did my best to send out some good vibes. All right, everybody, if you can't a tall beach, I just want to tell you all that I love you very much, and I wish all you guys love, health, and happiness. I love you. Someone goes up to, I think, the Dalai Lama and says, you know, I want to be happy. How do I do this? The teacher says, well, first remove the I. Then remove the want. Then remove to be. And if you remove the I, and if you remove the want, and if you remove the to be, then what you're left with is happy. So there's the key. So stop the separation so that you're not an I out there on its own. And definitely remove the want because, of course, the want is the desire and the desire is what causes suffering. So take those out. Remember that you're one with the universe. Remember that there is no separation. Get rid of your desire for things to be other than they are. Get rid of the to be, which is the future. Sit here now in the present, and you're happy. It was early the next morning when I crossed paths with an old monk. I could see the wisdom in his eyes. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Some encounters really leave an imprint on the mind and soul. This made my day. You got, life is supposed to be fun. You're so, this is a journey, it's an adventure. You're supposed to be going with the waves, with the rolls of life, and really enjoying every moment to its full capacity. Everything we are in the moment has literally been thought into our being. 
We are constantly attracting what we are sending out through the vibrations of our thoughts. I boarded a boat in the morning to the majestic island of Pee Pee. I was excited to meet my friend Coco, a local tattoo artist that hadn't left the island in over eight years. My daughter always says that to me. She's like, Dad, you have a, your nose looks like a, like a parrot. Yeah, everything's like right here. Yeah. Simple island life was exactly what I needed for a few days. PP Island was devastated by the tsunami as well, with an estimated 4,000 people losing their lives. But through the coordinated effort of many, this island is now thriving again. You know, he is very happy. Happy? Because no car, no, no, just stay okay. If I bore, I go to the, to, to, to the ocean, go fishing, drink a beer, no problem. Swimming, no problem. Awesome. Be happy. Okay, have a nice day. Yeah, be happy. Be happy. <laughs> That's why Bob Marley said, I love <laughs> Okay, have a nice evening, guys. Take care. Thanks for the show. If you can actually have an open mind and all these amazing things that the world has to offer, it just it gives you a, a broader scope on things that are in front of you. Energy, one yeah. power. That's right. Karma. All the sickness is coming from your breath. I got it. Me too. Every day now when I wake up, every day, every moment, when I'm alive on this planet, I just, I don't take any of them for granted. None of them. Life is so, so special, so precious. It's a lot easier to be nice and gentle than it is to be angry and mental. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, and you? Good to see you. Give me a hug. Yeah. Go, gotta go, gotta go. We're gonna miss the boat. Oh, right on. Here we go. Yes, good stuff. How's it going, buddy? Hello. Good to see you. All right, thanks. You're all gassed up, ready to roll? I found that a lot of people I've met in small communities have a calmness about them. And in conversing with our boat skipper, Bao, he told me he finds happiness in the simplicity of life and family. He does what he loves. All he desires is within arm's reach. Anybody that's been through adversities in life, you can't understand how, how amazing and how all the gifts that life, life gives you if you don't go through certain setbacks in your life. And there's always somebody worse off. There's always somebody worse off. You know, so you have to appreciate what you have. After a great day exploring the bays, I was going to have my much anticipated reunion with my old pal Coco. Well, my friend Coco here in PP Island put two tattoos on me a couple years ago. One was love and the other one was good life. Today, I'm gonna get a tattoo that uh, means a lot to me. Infinity for the infinite, that everything is infinite in this life. G for my dad, Cindy for my mom, Sadie for my daughter, and then Greg for my brother, and then infinity forever. Seeing him again was awesome. Hey, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. I know, Mom. I know you're saying another tattoo, but I'm getting your name on me because I love you. Having a family that loves you is often taken for granted. Knowing that so many people around here have lost so much made me appreciate my own family even more. My family means everything to me. They gave me the gift of life, 
and have always stood by me through my adversities, and for that I will be eternally grateful. I've chosen to express my inner being on the outside as well, so Coco and his partner tatted me up with my design. Tattoos may not be everyone's way of showing appreciation for family and love, but this is one of mine. Not too loud. Mama like it. Didn't hurt at all. <laughs> a fire show capped off a great day. I always find myself in a state of gratitude when meeting people that are traveling from all over the world. Even though we come from different places, there's a oneness that brings people together in special moments like these. These are the moments when I wish time could just stand still. Well, everything is cause and effect is the way that I look at it. So the main thing is to be in rhythm with everything. Once you're aware, and awareness and clarity would be the main things because there's so much denial and so much delusions going on that, uh, you know, the truth is not there. So once you're clear yourself and your understanding of life as it really is, and you're in rhythm with everything and everyone all the time, and you're this fearless person with this third eye open and all the pineal and all these things that are going on, you know, you're going to be a more, let's say, evolved human being and you're right in tune with the universal mind. Those books will come to you. Those people will come to you. Everything will come to serve you. The tranquility of Wang Prabang was a great feeling. This is a quaint little town with temples aplenty and peaceful monks getting along with their day. got super soaked by a monk. I forgive him though. On my first night in Lao, the family who ran the guest house gave me the opportunity to make a meal for them. Every morning, hundreds of local monks line up to receive offerings of rice. This is a tradition that dates back to the 14th century, when Buddhism was introduced to Lao. Meditation is practiced daily by the monks in this region. Reaching a meditative state has the ability to connect one with the universal mind. It strengthens the immune system and benefits overall well-being. Seeing these monks and conversing with them firsthand gave me a broader perspective on the simplicity of the life that they have chosen. In this rapidly changing world, we are discovering that the only thing hindering our freedom from a peaceful mind are resistant thoughts. Happiness is the experience of connectivity, for lack of a better word, where we, where we really can identify oneness, where we really can give and receive at the same time where we find ourselves smiling or having tears in our eyes that really have come from a place of awareness and not pain or sadness or tragedy, but from awareness of that connectivity. This is what our wonderful planet gives us. Some of the most beautiful waterfalls in the world. Right here in Lao Prabang, Lao. I'm with 
with Marie and Alex. Marie, what makes you happy in life? I think it's to share a moment with people. I think it's the best thing in life. Alex? Uh, sim simple moments like uh, just uh, look at the sunset or uh, be in the nature. The powerful of nature is really nice. <laughs> Awesome, girls. <laughs> As if the waterfalls weren't enough, we were in for an even bigger surprise. experience. <laughs> After that, we had a chance to play a traditional game of seven and meet some friendly locals. Hello. How are you? Hi. Come, come, Hi. come. <laughs> that evening, I made contact with an old friend. I saw some very heartwarming pictures of Sarinda doing advocacy work in Cambodia. I hadn't talked to her for some time as both our lives had taken different paths. That phone call was about to change my life. I learned that she was doing a bike ride across Cambodia with Project Futures Global, a program of the Somali Mom Foundation. It was a bike ride to raise money to put an end to human trafficking and sex slavery. And he said he'd seen a, a Facebook post that I was heading to Cambodia with one of the organizations that I work with a lot, which is the Somali Mom Foundation. And he was going to be in that area and if he could come. And I was like, the more the merrier, of course. Let me just tell you what we're doing now because it's not like a motorcycle, it's not even a moped, it's not even like you know, a Segway. It's your legs on a bike for 500 kilometers and not like a nice Schwinn bike like a ghetto Cambodian screeching bike. And, uh, and he was down, he was just ready to go. And, you know, I was really proud that, uh, you know, she had focused on her desires and was getting everything that she wanted in her life. And I saw the pictures that she was doing with advocacy work in Cambodia and other parts of Southeast Asia. And I was just, I was drawn to it. I was like, wow, raising money for human trafficking and sex slavery. What better cause could there be to give back with an open heart to some of these kids that are less fortunate? So I got on the ringer with her right away, and I was like, "Wow, wait, look! I'm, wow, look what you're doing!" And I, you know, I find out she's doing this bike ride for the Smalley Mom Foundation, and instantly, you know, I talked to my cameraman. I said, "We got to do this ride. We got to do this." I think the most important thing to us is uh, seeing on the faces of other people when we can uh, give to them, help help them in some way, and just uh, just let them get ahead in life. Uh, we've been blessed to live in Canada and have so much, and it's wonderful to come to this place that uh, has been so devastated and just help a little bit. And the organization we're working for right now, it's called Step Ahead, and it's giving people a hand up and helping them to step ahead out of whatever problems they're in to um, make their life better and more fulfilling. What better way to have a holiday along with giving? So it's, it's great. Yeah. There would be 20 riders on this trip from all parts of the world with one purpose in mind, to make a positive change in the lives of others. Seats with leg room, hey, just our luck. God's on our side.
another day to give my best self to the world. I am absolutely stoked. 10 days from now, I'm gonna be doing a bike ride across the country of Cambodia. I am so utterly blessed to be a part of this amazing project. And uh, right now, I'm going to get myself a pair of spandex biking shorts. We gotta go get suited and booted for bike wear. I'm on a mission. Uh, we have large. <laughs> you look beautiful. <laughs> Know what it is. <laughs> actually, I actually look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Before taking off on the bike ride, we headed up river. We had the opportunity to visit a monastery. So like the monk, when they, you go to meet them, and then they're like chanting, and then they're just blessing you to be good luck, he'll see long life, happiness, and go to any place, victory or a time. So this one that the monk, when you're coming to meet them, always chanting to like something, the necklace, I mean like the holy thing. Even like the lucky bracelet, like this one also. Yeah, also the monk, they just like blessing this one, and try can support to yourself and your family. so grateful right now that these beautiful monks invited me into their monastery here in Cambodia. I am so, so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Little did we know that we would meet locals with tales. I was greeted by this wonderful gentleman named Curly. So Curly comes up to me, I got my bags, I got camera guy behind me, and he's like, I was sent to you by God, I'm gonna be your guide. And I was <laughs> like, oh yeah? And I'm like kind of skeptical and whatnot. I was like, you're sent to me by God, eh? But there was something in his eyes that was just truth. And I told Curly that I wanted to visit a local orphanage. And I wanted to deliver some big bags of rice, and I wanted to make these ki uh, some kids' day. And I was just like amped. I was just calibrating at such a high level. I was just like, "Ooh, I can't wait! I can't wait!" Uh, he set us up with two humongous bags of rice. We're going to visit uh, an orphanage. Uh, we're going to go put some food in these kids' mouths, and that makes my mind at ease. Puts my heart into an awesome vibration, knowing that these kids are going to be fed for a while here. I brought some big bags of rice that would keep the kitchen stocked for three months. They were very grateful and had smiles from ear to ear. It's like heaven on earth for me. You want to know why? It's because as soon as I walked in the gates with two simple bags of rice, I got attacked and swarmed by all these beautiful spirits that once again just embraced me. So we're at the 
this orphanage right now, and no hey, hey, hey. And none of these kids have parents, and if they do have parents, they don't know where they are. So guess what? I'm their dad for the day. <laughs> I always think surprise drop-ins feed more emotion and excitement. This is my little buddy Aaron, and Aaron is a heart surgery survivor. And Aaron makes the choice every day to get up, put a smile on that face, and be happy. Okay, guys. Always trying to give, 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 and never expectations of what I get in return, ever. But the return of someone's happiness or the return of happiness itself is one of my biggest joys in my life because I get to share myself, my real self, to people. And I get to make that a career. And I get to make believe that. And then to see that in reality and to see the accomplishments, like I said, and successes of that itself is like a blessing. It really is. The group had gathered the evening before to get briefed on the journey we were about to embark on. Some of you may wonder how relating human trafficking and sex slavery to happiness is relevant. Finding long-lasting happiness in whatever shape or form, in many instances, comes through pain and suffering. And the people that I met, from the victims, riders, and Somali, are all living proof that happy days are here and now. People came together to ride from all over the world with one thing in common, to make a difference. We may have come from different places, but as like-minded as we all were, it didn't take long for all of us to form a bond. Seeing so many wonderful spirits in the countryside and being greeted with endless hellos was indescribable. It was official, the ride was on. Where is this happening from? And how do we stop this? And a lot of it is with educating the children and making sure that they know what's happening. So they, from the get-go, put Merrick on their brothers and their sisters. So that from the get-go, when they see their sister being sold, they go, no, that's not right. Or when they eventually have kids themselves, they already have that value system in place. So that doesn't happen because it's so shocking to us, but that value system isn't there. Inspiration isn't just a word, it's a feeling. It's what drives many human beings into wanting to do better for the world and others. All of the people involved grasp the meaning of how a little help can go such a long way. We rode for what we believed in, guided by the inspiration of Somali and the girls whose lives are being changed. I think we've raised over about $120,000 just in, in, what, nine days of cycling? That's all leg power. That was yeah. it. You were like, I can't go any further. And then you just think about it, and you think about what you're complaining about. You think about, what am I saying I can't go any further to? And you're doing it for girls that never get the opportunity to say, I can't go any further, because it's not their choice. I was feeling a little tired. And then I just high-fived, like, 15 of the most beautiful children I've ever seen. And literally, that was like, Oh, I can ride for 45 more. Not a problem. So amazing, so beautiful. Oh my God, here comes more kids. All right, now you can see pretty much anytime you get tired. Hi! This is what happens. Cheerleaders. Hi, guys! Woo! 1.2 million women and children get sold every year. Um, we have 100,000 that are in the US alone. We have the youngest girls that are being sold are two. Up for about $50 US, they have to service upwards of 25 to 30 clients a day. The average age in which girls are sold at 13. Um, in some countries, they have a life expectancy of three years, which means they'll never see their 16th birthday. Like it goes on and on and on. It is a rabbit hole of depression, but it's finding the light within that. It's, it's going, the good outnumber you, and we're coming for you. And instead of going, oh my God, there's so much bad, you have to just look at it and go, no, yeah, there is, of course there is. There's always gonna be violence in this world. There's always gonna be things that we're fighting. But as long as we sit there and don't go, oh my God, and become victims ourselves, we're okay.
The first day of the ride, we had the opportunity to meet a great group of women, and they were survivors, living proof of change in the right direction. Modeled after Somali Mom's life and experience, the Voices for Change program is designed to give survivors of sex trafficking a voice in their lives. The program provides a platform for survivors to become global advocates and change agents in the fight against modern-day slavery. Shrey Peck stood up to share a story with the group. Trafficked at the age of seven, she is now a strong leader working in the advocacy department of the Somali Mom Foundation. She's just one of the brave girls that now dedicates her life to helping others. In addition to educating officials, students, and the general public, these women work closely with shelter organizations, participating in rescue operations, and working with victims to support the recovery process. We had a great lunch with the girls, and they were able to share their experiences and educate us on the nature of human trafficking. <laughs> Seeing the smiles on their faces gave us strength energy, and the inspiration to ride on. Human trafficking is the third largest organized crime in the world. It is believed that two to four million women and children are sold into prostitution every year. In Southeast Asia, the trafficking and abuse of women and young children is widespread. Cultural practice and economics contribute to the high rates of sex trafficking. It saddened me to know that many of these girls we encountered alongside these roads would be sold into the business of sex slavery, often by members of their own family. Seeing all these little girls reminded me of my daughter. We were fully exposed to the reality of this country. Many different emotions were shared along the ride. It's people like you and I that can make changes and give hope for generations to come. I realized that more than ever on this trip. As we rode along the countryside, the feeling of freedom in all its beauty felt so good. I'm in the midst of it right now. Fresh air, beautiful sunshine, the birds are singing, the grass is growing, the wind is blowing. It's when we're connected, when you know you're connected. That feeling overwhelms you, that you know that you're part of something greater. This is who you are. This is why you're here. This is what makes you, you. Now, Somali Mom was sold into a brothel at the age of 12, and she was servicing many clients a day. And she actually escaped with the help of a French aid worker. She's had her house lit on fire. She's had people threaten her life. She's had the craziest things happen that you would not even believe that would break anybody on top of everything that happened. And she's still fighting. She's still doing it. She's flying all over the world. She's speaking at conferences. She's a CNN hero. She is my hero. She's amazing. She has made it her life mission to help save others that went through similar circumstances. Somali continues her field work and has reached over 7,000 victims. She stands for good. The girls that love and respect her are pillars of strength in making this cause bigger and more powerful they believe. All the girls that were in this shelter felt protected. They felt safe and protected because of her. So many of the girls now that Somali has helped over the years are now modeling themselves after Somali's life and now they're being able to give back and render service to these other girls 
which is now making this a more powerful organization. And it's just, it was amazing to watch. It was amazing just to be a part of. To me, the eyes say a lot about a person. They are the windows to a person's soul. They can tell many stories of love and sorrow, but they can also tell the truth. But for me, they are perfect. They are perfect because you know what they have been through. You can see all these young kids. These kids, 95%, 98% have been abused, raped, and stolen from them. So you know them. So sometimes they they love, they love their mother, they love their sister, they love their uncle. And your role is so important for them. I could feel that Somali had a lot on her shoulders. The business of sex slavery is a very dangerous and profitable business, and every day her life is at risk. I could see in her eyes how she loved all of the girls. She was like their mom. Seeing Somali's girls made me want to hold my own daughter. It moved everyone to see. It was more evidence what the emotion of love can have when a person just loves unconditionally. Sometimes the people say, don't let the girl talk, but the girl needs talking to the people that she feel love. When she talks to you, that you feel like them, it makes them feel better. Feel better because she has someone that can help them. Somali asked uh, if anybody wanted to tell their story, and we were at a, a center for 16 and under girls, um, and a bunch of little hands popped up. And... Having the girls on film could threaten their safety, so to protect them, we have hidden their identity. Well, at 7, she, um, her father went to her. So she, he told her that if she told anybody that he would kill her. Most of them, most of them would introduce themselves and they're between five, six, and seven. And they would talk about, you know, when they were younger, their experiences and um, who it was that raped them or who, um, who sold them, and a lot of the girls just, one of the girls in particular that, in particular that I remember, she, uh, she just said she wanted to know what love felt like. That's all she wanted to know. She just wanted to be loved, and that the only memory she has of her family is feeling like garbage, like they would just throw her away. She didn't mean anything. Um, and she was just sobbing at this point, and all of us were just equal, if not more, blubbering at that point. And then she would sit down, and then the next girl would stand up. So she hurts inside. She says she has a heart like everybody else. This girl came up to me and grabbed my face and wiped my tears away with her thumbs. And she said, don't cry, sister. And I was looking at her being like, I'm crying for you. Like, I. The reason why I'm crying is, is your story, is your strength. Mm -hmm. And you're now coming to me, wiping my tears away, telling me not to cry. Yeah, and it's great for him to be able to be around the girls as well, especially for the girls, because it's positive male attention. It's somebody that loves them, that doesn't want to hurt them, that is there to listen, that's there to have compassion, that's filled with love, that's filled with happiness. It's wonderful. It was amazing to see him there with the girls. It was phenomenal, just crying, and they're crying, and they're hugging, and we're all dancing. It was ridiculous. It was so much fun. Somali Mom didn't do this to be famous. Somali Mom, with her heart, is actively engaged in making this world a better place. She's one of the most humble, beautiful spirits that I've met along my travels. And meeting her will always, always be etched in my soul forever. We cry, but you know, sometimes we have to clean a little bit of our eyes. You gotta cleanse the soul. <laughs> so, Molly, I'm very uh, honored to meet you. It's me. And uh, to be riding with an amazing group for the cause. So, I want to ask you, what makes you truly happy in life? Me? It's make me happy. They, uh, it's make me happy when I saw my girl. They are very successful. They have her own kid, and they call me, look, your grandmother coming, so I have a visit them last week, and then they like, look, the grandma, my grandmama coming. And I saw them with the big house, and then, yeah. They make me happy every day. You be my kid. I want you to spend a bit time with my kid. Spend your time with my kid. My hero, that's my hero. 
They are my heroes. That, don't be scared. Don't be scared of suffering. Suffering, if you can turn your suffering, it can help you, help you to be happy. You suffer, no one can take away, but you can take away from love, from helping each other and help yourself. And then one thing I want to add you, like, love is no condition. If you love someone, you have to love from the bad side and good side. So don't hate the people, even they make the wrong, they make a mistake or wrong thing. Teach them to be good. I'm not scared to teach them. To know that there are people that desire to put an end to this horrific crime is change in the right direction. We all felt so proud to be part of something that stands for the truth. The relief efforts taking place are a big win in favor of humanity. For many of the victims, they are now thriving. The faces I met will never be forgotten, and an attachment to the riders will be in my memory forever. Circumstances may create outcomes of fear, but courage and love will find a way to mend the wounds. <laughs> What makes me happy in life is trying to be content in every single thing that I do. So then it doesn't matter if it's a good thing or a bad thing or a scary thing or, um, you know, an exciting thing. Or it doesn't matter if it's something I've purchased or something that I've given. It's just finding contentment in every little piece of all those parts of life. That's where I find happiness. Team morale was on a high after the shelter. Even though the stories of the girls were hard to process, it was back on the bikes and time to ride on. Stays around your mouth. <laughs> was another big inspiration for the group. At the young age of 70, he's been fighting prostate cancer for seven years. He's battled his own adversities, which has led him into funding a school in Cambodia in memory of his late wife. Terry, why, why do you do this, buddy? Well, as we, as we saw, as we're riding along, all the kids, and statistics tell us that one in 40 of, these, of the girls that we're seeing are gonna be sold into prostitution. And we've got to end that. And this is one way that we can do to end it. And it, it has to be stopped. So I'm doing it for the kids. I, when I was here before, I just fell in love with all these kids. They're, they're, and, and the people are just such wonderful people. They need help. So you know what? That's what we're going to do. And this is why we're doing this. Thank you. What makes me happy is riding across Cambodia to end sex slavery, to bring awareness to these women and children that are going through this, to doing it with 21 of the most amazing people I've ever met and uh, to giving back, to being a friend to mankind and just living your life in love. That's what makes me happy. Mwah! Another big hug, another big awesome well. hug. <laughs> Next stop was Rabbit Island. A little fun in the sun added to the togetherness of the team. It was nice after riding 57 kilometers in the morning to have a relaxing afternoon by the sea. We've arrived, Rabbit Island. <laughs> come on, come on, I'm trying. Well, right now 
I'm attempting to climb a coconut tree. <laughs> and to be perfectly frank, it's a lot harder than they make it look. <laughs> pressures, whether it's rejection pressures or whatever it is, but what has to happen is that you need to break through it here. This is where it happens. You break through it and then you just shift. Your attitude just shifts. I, I, I feel better. Like natural caffeine. Just wake up. The mighty temple of Angkor Wat was where we finished off the 500 kilometer ride of our lives. This beautiful stone carved temple dating back as early as the 12th century is one of Cambodia's symbols and one of the seven wonders of the world. This bike ride was empowering. It was everything and more of what I thought it would be. Knowing we're going to be leaving the country of Cambodia was a bit tough, but finishing off on such a high let us feel a sense of accomplishment. Just like every experience in life, it was coming to an end. It was a rewarding feeling that we all pushed on as a team and raised $122,000 for the Somali Mam Foundation. Number one thing is family. Um, without uh, my wife and my kids, nothing matters anywhere in this entire world. Obviously, friends and the rest of my family have made me who I am. Without them, I would be nothing. And that's one thing that people can take every single day. Is if you've got family, every day can be great for you, as long as you want it. The right frame of mind, the right attitude will take you places no matter what. Nobody can tell you you can't do it. Always believe that you can do it, and you'll be successful in every day of your life. Chiang Mai would be the last stop of my journey before going home. <laughs> the taxi man played down the hike to the Big Buddha. So tired. <laughs> you said that was 200 steps. That, that's the 200 steps? What's that right there? Fake steps? <laughs> but the view at the top was breathtaking. I met a lady who was 95 years old, but she could have fooled me. Her smile was like a ray of light. <laughs> I spoke to a monk about the journey of life. He told me to just enjoy every moment and to keep spreading love and compassion along my path. His kind words gave me the strength and courage to keep on keeping on. When I woke up the next morning, I got a message that would change my life forever. Good morning, Ryan. Well, I know you wake up every morning with a growing positive attitude towards the day ahead, and today should be mu not much different. However, I've added some extra positive energy. Anyways, today you can rejoice as I received a letter from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and the good news is, is you were granted multiple entries into the United States for business and for pleasure. Well, I hope that makes your day. It's been a very long time coming, and I believe very deserving considering how hard you've been working towards your goals. And of course, 
not giving up on the pursuit of the return of happiness. Uh, these are tears of joy. It's been 12 years. It's been 12 years since I went to prison down there. And now I'm gonna go surprise my little girl. This is, this is the greatest. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers. Thank you so much. That's what makes me, I'm, I am happy. I can't even believe this. <laughs> wow, wow, holy sh Sorry, I shouldn't swear. <laughs> oh, I should call my dad right now. I gotta call my dad. You know, if there's uh, the law of attraction or whatever, it's, everything is paying off. It's all worth it. Whatever you've been doing, it's the right thing. You know, you're doing good in the world, and that's, if good things happen to good people. I said that to you since you were born. And now this has come back uh, to paying huge dividends for you. And you will benefit so, so greatly on this. I mean, I think it's just absolutely a gift from, from somebody, wherever, I don't know. Freedom. <laughs> so you know what makes me happy? What makes me happy is my family, the people I love, the people I care about. And watching them do good things in the world and watching them accomplish things. And I think that for myself, the way I look at it is it's all about karma. If you give good stuff, you get good stuff back. And that's really all the key to happiness is. Give good, get good. To me, that's happy. It was the day we brought her home from the hospital. <laughs> Seems like it was just yesterday. <laughs> Surreal. Doesn't... It's real, <laughs> but it doesn't seem real. Maybe on the way there, if, if, if there's a place where I could stop off and get a flower or something like that, a rose, or that would be really much appreciated. Shouldn't be a problem. Cool, man. Long stem, of course. That's all you need? <laughs> That's, this is all I need. Okay. I've been waiting for this moment for over 10 years. Wow. My return to happiness with seeing my daughter again. Dreams do come true. We just have to have faith and believe. When you find that life's going sideways and you can't take the weight of the world on your back, a lie breaks the end of a highway, slowly rising and ready to explode. When you can't break down all the walls built up in front of you, and you can't see through all the pain that's all you have in you, there's another way to escape the darkness and find the truth. Spread your wings now so you can take control.
right, Sadie, what makes you happy in life? My dad, my mom, my grandma, my grandpa, my family, soccer, and candy. Happiness really means looking at your children, and looking at your family, and just outside of that little circle is all the people that are involved with you uh, through your life and making them, everybody ha is walking around with a smile on their face, they're loving life. What makes me happy? <laughs> well, accepting who you are and taking out all judgment and all self-criticism out of your head and just being. And that to me is being happy. And happiness to me really is, is uh, a sense of peace, um, feeling at peace with myself and people around me. And ultimately, what makes me happy is waking up in the morning and feeling peaceful. And that is where I focus every day. If I'm peaceful, everything else is great. And that's as happy as I've ever been. Those moments in life when you're so busy doing something and you're not living in the moment and then suddenly something hits you, maybe it's a sunrise or something in nature and you just go, oh my God. My family, my friends, and just trying to make a positive difference in the lives of other people. In order to know where you're going, I have to, you have to know where you come from. So I think that family is very important and it makes me happy. Watching children love life and explore and learn. What makes me happy in life is helping others find their purpose and passion so that they can go and make other people happy. So every good cause brings a good effect. And just smile at somebody every day. Say hello every day. Happy, happy, happy. What makes me happy is to have opportunities to bless the lives of other people. Doing what I love. Music, being productive, meeting meeting people through creating. It doesn't matter what you what you find that makes you happy. Just do something. 